do you think there are any drawbacks to his game? Because right now you see the highlight reel for Wimby and you're just thinking to yourself, my goodness, there's a reason this guy is minus 20,000 to go first <laughs> overall. Like, do you think this is an immediate game changer for the San Antonio Spurs? Oh, there's no question about it. And the Spurs, if you think about their history, it's almost perfect. I know the mm -hmm. Blazers and Hornets and Rockets and Pistons disagree because they didn't end up number one, but they took they took David Robinson number one overall in 1987. They took Tim Duncan number one overall in 1997. So now they're going to take Wimby, and so that makes three marquee centers in their history. So when you look at a franchise that has a couple of Hall of Famers in this spot, now I'm not calling Wimby a Hall of Famer already, but certainly he has that potential. It's just amazing that of all the teams he could have gone to, that San Antonio is the call. And you talk about his weaknesses. I think the only real weakness here is, look, he's 230 pounds. So he's still a big guy, but when you're seven foot four, 230 is not that big. He's only 19 years old. I just think that whenever you are that tall, and we've seen this over time, guys who are that lanky who are way taller than the average human being who are that, who have such a huge wingspan, they have a propensity for maybe getting injured more so than other players. That was an issue with Greg Oden. It was an issue with Sam Bowie going way back. Now, those guys were bigger, but ultimately, when you're bigger than the average human, and this is bigger than the average NBA player, we're talking about seven foot four, there's always, I think, potentially some health concerns, but we haven't seen them thus far. Right, and I think the other factor is that he gets a Hall of Fame coach to coach him up and Coach Popovich, oh, yeah. who David just put in the chat, the Coach Pop is never going to retire now, which is an apt point. Coach Pop mm -hmm. is not young, but he still feels very sharp. So I think this pick going to San Antonio, it, it feels – I don't want to say it like feels right because, you know, I'm sure there are other fans of other teams, especially like the Detroit Pistons that are shattering glass right now saying, God, we tanked for this and we didn't get it. But the Spurs as a franchise, don't they feel like a well-run franchise? Like I know they've been in the cellar lately, but still it feels like a team that, you know, can definitely rebuild and maybe be there in a few years. Like there were a few teams that I was like hoping that he wouldn't go to because it wouldn't seem mm -hmm. like super fair. But it felt like this was a good landing spot, even though I would have liked to see him on the Hornets for my husband, who is a Hornets fan, and also the fact that he got to play uh, with yeah. LaMelo Ball. That would have been electric to watch. But did you like the landing spot here, or were you kind of pulling for another team? Oh, I think this is as good as it gets. You get a Hall of Fame head coach to teach you, and not only that, a Hall of Fame coach again who has coached guys in this very position, mm -hmm. number one overall, who plays center. Now, Victor Wimbignana is not necessarily going to play center if he's going to move into that spot. I, he's a guy who's going to play all over the place, and I think his game will change as his body changes. That's going to be huge for him. He does need to put on more weight because you will be able to push him around currently at 19 years old, but I could not think of a better landing spot for a guy like this who's going to a head coach who's been there and done that. This is perfect. On this show, we love drama, and nothing would be more dramatic than a live tour player winning the PGA Championship. Are there any players on the live tour that you think have an actual chance at winning this? I'll tell you what. Maybe Phil could do it. I mean, the guy was T2 at the Masters. Brooks was T2 at the Masters. What did we learn about the live guys? We learned that they can hang with the PGA Tour golfers in a major championship capacity. So Brooks Kepka is atop my list here as far as the live guys are concerned. Again, T2 at the Masters, proving that live competition can perhaps prepare you for major championship competition. Four straight top 11 finishes on live. Of course, he won the PGA back in 2018 at Bell Reeve, 2019 at Beth Page Black. He seems healthier now. He hasn't been the last couple of years. So keep an eye on Brooks Kepka. Yes, that would be dramatic on Sunday <laughs> evening if Brooks is hoisting the Watermaker Trophy. Cam Smith, too, is interesting. The only reason I am afraid of Cam Smith this week, he sprays it off the tee and his irons aren't good enough to save him from the rough. The putter's really good, but if you're not hitting greens and you're not saving yourself around the greens, you're going to be in trouble here this week at Oak Hill. So Brooks could be the guy 
to get his third PGA here this week. How much do you, at least in this series, put an emphasis on coaching? We know Coach Spo, he's a known commodity for the Heat, but when you look at Joe Mazzula, he's gotten a little bit of criticism, but look, he's here. This is exactly where the Celtics are supposed to be. Do you factor that in at all, or do you just look at the numbers and the guys on the court? No, I definitely factor that in with these two coaches. If it were Spolstra versus, um, say, Monty Williams, although he just got fired in in Phoenix, or or a veteran coach, Coach Bud uh, in, well, in Milwaukee, I'm saying all this, all these coaches have been fired. What is going on here? Um, But Greg Popovich in San Antonio, a coach where, you know, the caliber of coaching is similar. This is a massive difference between Joe Mazzula and uh, and Eric Spolstra. Eric Spolstra is by far and away the better coach. And so I, I put a ton into that because he's able to make in-game adjustments. And that's something that we've seen Missoula kind of, as the series goes on, start to make more adjustments later in the series. We saw that in game six and game seven, putting Robert Williams back into the starting lineup against the Sixers. But it takes him a couple games where Eric Spolstra can – navigate these these challenges on the fly and make adjustments mid-game. And I think that's going to serve Miami very well. So definitely uh, give the Heat a couple extra points in terms of when I'm looking at the spreads here because of Eric Spolstra. I just think he's a massive difference maker for this team. So if we ask Chat GPT to put together a list of good candidates for Tom Brady's next girlfriend, who do you think they would be? So I think a I think Alex Earl would be an interesting one because uh, he could literally Tom Brady could go in any direction with this. So Alex Earl very pretty. Some of her videos I do I do like like her makeup videos like things like that. But I think she's someone, a TikTok she's, star. TikTok star for the people at home. Yes, and she's, she's a TikTok star, which is like you were saying, Charles, a different category I think of celebrity because if you don't have TikTok, you have no clue who these people are. So, which, you know, that's fine. But I think someone who, she, he could go younger. So if in the younger category, she's maybe, tw- I think she's 23. She just graduated from the University of Miami. Oh. So we're going way young. Like that would Whoa. be way, mm. way young. And you forget that. So as I'm saying that, yeah, it's about be a 20, about 20 years younger than him. If he went young, I would say Alex Earl would be the top of the young list category. If he is going with, accomplished in the level of his of their feel that he is in his maybe the Reese Witherspoon rumor I didn't hate that when it's thinking about him mm-hmm. dating Reese Witherspoon could go with that but Kim Kardashian I kind of like it and the odds for that there are odds for Tom Brady's next girlfriend plus 2500 for Kim Kardashian <laughs> so I, there Ooh. you know he, there's a possibility a potential there but if he was to date a Kardashian sister I think Chloe would be a good one too because she no she, I don't know. Only basketball like players for her. Well, maybe she could switch it up. And may, her luck with that is she's had a, a bit what of a What about Kendall? Time. Kendall would be a good one, too, because she also has gone through some basketball players who d- it didn't really pan out. So maybe Ke- Kendall would be a good one if he's, again, going a little bit younger. But with a model. And model. And, yep. Kendall would be a good one, I think. And, and yeah, I think the, uh, of the sisters, I think that's enough. I think Travis Barker has. <laughs> Like that. Maybe that's maybe Chris Jenner. What, what about Chris Jenner? What that, I was just gonna oh say that God. you flip the Chris world Jenner. on its head and go Chris Jenner. That's what you do. You shock or, everyone with that. Cover of Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, Martha Stewart. Tom Get Green. In line, baby. Get in line. Stewart. She looks amazing. Get in line. On the she cover. looks oh, fantastic. My she looks no outrageous. Question about it. That's why, okay, Tom Brady and Martha Stewart, write that. I'm, I am going to put odds on that. <laughs> Figure that. Put her on the list of potential new girlfriends for Tom Brady, Martha Stewart. 